All right, another piece of the video coming at you because the camera just shut off. We were on the underbody, just talking about a few drips. And uh, this one back here on the transmission case and uh, nothing serious, it's near the drain plug. Up here we've got a little bit of a rear main oil uh, pan seep. Um, car's been here on the hoist for an hour and I don't see any fresh drops on the ground. So whatever is leaking is not substantial, not coming out here. R-U-G-E, uh, I got a still photo of that <clears throat> on the transmission. Didn't get you that last number or character. Radiator core has been changed. I uh, got a little drip of antifreeze coming down off the top radiator hose clamp. And we'll take a look from up top and see if that's anything significant or it's right on the top of the hose right there okay anything gathering i don't think so or right, you want to go ahead and bring the car down sure. thanks Quentin. <clears throat> touch-ups on the valence panel. Chrome bumpers look like they've been replaced with aftermarket bumpers. Bezels, <clears throat> markers, grill, all the chrome's been um, changed out and everything looks pretty good. Just a little minor patina on the windshield wiper stanchions. Headlights, bright lights, and running lights were all tested and they all work. Yeah, please do. Took a short uh, one minute cold start video with the uh, temperature gauge showing that the car is uh, you know, down at the same temperature as the floor and started up nicely. Cold start, there was a little bit of lifter tapping for about three seconds till the lifters pumped up, maybe three, four seconds. Engine sounds good, yeah. There was no uh, smoke on the cold start video. digital paint meter around the car besides the magnets. Put your foot on the brakes. There we go, sounds good. You want to hit the turn signals while you're there? Thanks, yep. Thank you again, you want to throw it in reverse? All right, perfect, that's good. Keep moving up. Thanks. So short driving the building is about all we're gonna do. Yeah, that'd be great if you would, thanks. All right, burn some rubber, Quentin. Smoke them. I'll get in and test that clutch out myself. Not hearing really any suspension noise, do hear some clutch engagement noise. Thanks. Yeah. Actually, you want to go right back to the door? I'm going to crank the door open so we don't uh, kill ourselves in here. Is that a power door? Uh, yeah, there's a switch on the left side. Thanks. Stick the back end right out in the parking lot a little bit, see if we can get the... I'll get cold for the rest of it. Keep it out of here, thanks. So multiple still photos of the vehicle, we'll let it warm up out here. Um, the reflective quality of the paint's very nice.
Don't know how old the paint is, but I'm guessing it hasn't had a ton of road miles on it. There's some small uh, hairline scratches that uh, might polish out. This one, I think, would go away. This one, maybe, from leaning over, typically, you know. Little hairline scratch right here. Oops. The digital paint meter liked the car pretty good. Small chip here in the center of the passenger door, and then a contact chip here, and one here on the edge, very small. Belt moldings and sweeps all appear to have been changed. Glass is in really good shape. The windows roll up and down nicely, but this window is a little bit stiff, a little stiffer than the others. And the car light uh, markings present. Minor patina on the vent window frames. Windshield trim, I believe, was changed out and minor patina on the uh, windshield stanchions, but nothing horrific. Glass is in really good shape. There might be a tiny, tiny, tiny little stone splash here, but it's hard to say without scrubbing it, seeing if it'll go away. Convertible top raises and lowers manually, and uh, we have a video of showing how uh, hard or easy it is to go up. It's pretty easy, actually. Didn't find it to be too difficult. Somebody got on this edge with a wheel and touched. There's a little bit of bare metal there showing on the um, tail light extension housing. There's a little bit of stone splash behind the rear tires, kind of typical and common, nothing really big. Small chip, small scratch. Nothing really too major. The only um, more significant uh, door dings or whatnot is there is a small ding. I think it's in this door. I've got a still photo of it. See it at the moment. Be on the wrong side of the car. And a really small ding right here above the R on the Ford. Let's see if I get that to be clear. A few polishing scratches here and there on the hood. aftermarket set of uh, rally wheels and they're in pretty good shape just a little bit of pitting on the chrome surface none of them look any worse than that up close uh, Uniroyal Tiger Paws older tread pattern but I would say they don't have that many miles on them uh, they have great tread on them remaining and I didn't really see any dry crack in the tread pattern but a little bit of uh, put pitting and patina this chrome uh, surround trim is in very nice shape Digital meter wise, we've got really good low readings, 5.4. I'm just going to do a few here because I've already got the stills. Six. And down here where I have magnets, four. Four. The corner of this door has had some repair. We've got a high reading of 21, 33, uh, 9. So it's a very small repair, just in this little section. And, uh, the adhesion is good otherwise through the bottom of the door, 3.2. I'm short on magnets, so six. Back here in the corner of the quarter, eight. There's one area here that's got a little repair right in here. So just right in here, a little bit of a bubble. The other door has a little better adhesion in the corners than this one does. Door lines are reasonably decent. This one's got a little bit of a outro to it. Pretty smooth up front. If anything, the door is in a little bit at the bottom. Doors open and close pretty nice. Two fingers. So paint and body, it's a pretty good looking driver. Two fingers. Two finger effort, I guess is what I'm trying to say there. Door jams are all taken apart and refinished. 
sill plates were changed. If you look from the uh, inside, the bottoms of the door corner overlap seams, they are decent. Remember that one had a little bit of repair. And the exterior corners, and both of them look like that. Rubbers were all changed. Door seals, belt sweeps, uh, bumpers, door bumpers, these little rubber bumpers here. I can stand a little bit of grease. But I'm lifting up on the car right now. And the whole car moves. So there's not a lot of sag to be talked about in the, uh, in the door hinges and the bushings. Seat covers uh, show pretty nicely front and rear. Aftermarket seat belts were added. Uh, quarter trim was addressed. There's a few small stains down low. And these upper um, window, sorry that's upside down. But these uh, panels were repainted. Front seat covers changed out. Seat backs changed out. Driver's seat just has a little bit of bolster wear on the, uh, some black marks from uh, something. Console has a little bit of wear, a little bit of paint wear. Dash has been repainted. Dash pad is in good shape. Uh, simulated wood steering wheel in good shape. Top loader, four speed, and shifter present. Hey, Mike, will you lift this top, please? show you how easy this top goes up. Oh, it's clipped down. Actually, he'll help you. See the clip? Just pull it back with your thumb, I think, here. Yep. Here you go. Yep. So, All the way up. Yeah. Use one hand, guys, just to show how easy it is. It's, it's very easy. We, do, we got a video of this thing going up and down. That's great. Thanks. Top's got a couple stains. One, two. No rips or tears here. The back window is clean. Again, still photos. We got one small little tear here and a little wear spot here at the folding point in the frame. And a small tear or wear spot there. White's in pretty good shape. All the chrome, if I didn't mention, has been changed out. Uh, gaskets were changed. No overspray seen in any of the usual suspect places. Just slight patina on the vent window frames, the uprights. The grill looks good. Badges look good. Yeah. Everything looks good. Here's a mark I might not have shown earlier. That's that little thing I was looking for in touch up. There it is. Headlights, tail lights, bright lights work. Engine's now been running for probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 minutes. Ignition's been addressed. Auto light carburetor. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. It's a little bit damp at the very top of the carburetor and uh, I cranked the screws down on the top plate of the carburetor while I was here. I don't think we have anything really leaking serious. Earlier we pointed out that there might be some antifreeze coming down from some place. I believe, oh there it is, you can see it. It's right there on the top of that lower radiator hose. And uh, I don't think it's coming out of the water pump. I don't see it there. So that probably just needs to be cranked or cut off and shortened up. And engine oil is clean. Antifreeze is green. Uh, no major contamination in it. Up here, the core support looks like it's in good shape. You'll notice that there are crush points in the apron. Here and here. Got to go back and read on these 64 and a half to see if those were actually part of the apron structure. I, I think they actually were. In 64 and a half, they had a reinforcement band that was welded along the edge of the hood. And I don't see that here. The hood may have been changed. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, apron stamp is there with the stars both um, before and after. Seems to run good. Radiator core again is in good shape. Oh, it's right there, thanks. So some of the this, this thing's got a set of rally rally pack gauges added to the steering column. The uh 
glasses back on. Our data tag down here. Can you hold that for just a minute? Thanks. Let's see if I can see the date of production on this. March uh, 03F. I'm sorry, A, B, C, D, E, F, June. June 3rd. And it's a decode. Whoops, I'm not even showing you the tag. I apologize. Let's try that again. Fifth digit in our bin. Come on, come into focus. There we go. We got a D. That's for 1964 and a half. And our uh, date, uh, 03F, June um, 3rd. So what that tells us is that the uh, 64 and a half were produced between March and um, I think it's August. I got to look it up. But, and so this car was produced in June, right in that time sequence. So that's good news. The Vintag definitely belongs to a 64 and a half. The other thing that's normally notable is that you've got a generator light instead of an oil light. I'm sorry. <laughs> instead of an alternator light. And we've got that, we got a generator light on the dash. That's kind of cool. On the fan speed, um, we've got off, and the, oh, got a squealing fan motor. Guess that proves I didn't try that yet. And we got fan speeds to the left and the right and off in the center. On 65, they changed this to a three-speed um, switch. So we got the correct fan controls. That is good news for a 64 and a half. Um, well, what else? The, uh, there's a fresh air knob here on the driver's side. It should be stamped with an A. And it is correct. And it works. We eliminated that in uh, 65. So, underneath the passenger seat, Passenger seats in 65 bolted to the floor with no adjustment, and this seat has an adjustment. So that's not a that is not a 64 and a half of a seat. So the interior we, we, we thought maybe the interior might have been it was at least redressed and possibly the seats were swapped. So somebody would prefer to have a uh, adjustable um, seat. As far as the engine goes. I couldn't pull a casting date off it. It does have a 64 cast date intake. That's good news. 63 or 64. Um, I'll have to go back and look at my photos. And uh, the passenger side, that's where the dipstick is on this car. And that was, uh, that's correct as well. The dipstick's not super long, and they talk about the dipsticks being long in 64 and a half, but <clears throat> it goes down to the right level as far as I'm concerned, and it gives us a good reading. So. Uh, as far as the heel and the toe pads, you know, the carpet's been changed in the car. We can't really tell much uh, about uh, that. And as far as hood moldings go, all there is is what I showed you up there for the uh, Ford emblems, and 64s weren't supposed to have that. So uh, that is, that's about all I came up with today. Could you drop this hood? Yeah. Thanks. The wipers are sweeping. Just a uh, single speed switch and often on Mustang you just see a little bit of a flop in the wiper transmission. Um, let's see if we can get those back off. Turn signal flashing left and right. It's always the same unit. But the high beam light does work. work. Brake lights work, backup lights work, factory temperature gauge is operating, radio makes some noise. We're in a building with steel roof so and the uh, fan controls are moving freely. Tachometer is working so that's hooked up. Oops. All right. As clutch engagement goes, oh, man, I spilled my lunch today. Clutch
clutch is engaging right off the floor, like within two inches. Not surprising. So the clutch uh, doesn't have much wear on it. Let's hope the thing stops. Brake pedal's a little low and I suspect it's because of that rear brake line leak. if you know what you're doing, doesn't it? No real shutter upon engagement. So the brakes need to be, that brake line needs to be fixed. Brakes bled out. Everything else that I can see seems to be working on the car, even the glove box light. The liner's a little bit loose, but the liner's been changed. Extra keys in there. Heater controls work, horn works, turn signals, brake lights, headlights, all that good stuff. I do believe, from the best of my abilities, that we're looking at a 64 and a half Mustang convertible. Manual top. Got a pretty good body there's definitely been some restorative work done to the sheet metal and a new set of wheels added new set of bumpers added contact chips here up top i don't know if i showed those or not but i'm showing them again and again a few hairline polishing marks that this car could really stand to be lightly uh, some 1200 grit and maybe some 2000 and above Again, there's not a lot of paint on the car, so you wouldn't want to get on it too hard with the wheel. You're going to find yourself, like this guy did, wheeling right through. been fun hasn't it leave me some feedback preferably positive subscribe to the channel jason from auto appraise that's presuming this video becomes public and again the videos don't go public until uh the client decides if they're a buyer or not i'm gonna embarrass myself and we can see where i open this hood no it's down here somewhere oh yeah pull up Celsius is doing. Engine temperature is good, 190. 50th radiator, we're cooling. That core looks good. We've got some dead bugs on it, but it's in good shape. Nothing pouring out of it once it's warmed up. They say that's a pretty good sign. All right. Unfortunately, there's four videos on this car. My camera shut off a couple times, and it takes a lot of time to edit them, so the clients can probably get four videos on this car. You may only see this one if you are later looking at it. Pre-purchase inspection, 800-301-3886. Wrapping it up. Jason from Auto Appraise. Have a great day.